Applied Linguistics Group is for helping students of BS English. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups. Dr. Khalid Malik has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Seoul. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and presently admitted to a postdoctoral study project in Canada. Find Applied Linguistics Group by reaching at youtube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani or copying or downloading a QR code to join. The Physical Adaptation Sources The Physical Adaptation Source Instead of looking at types of sounds as the source of human speech, we can look at the types of physical features humans possess, especially those that are distinct from other creatures, which may have been able to support speech production. We can start with the observation that, at some early stage, our ancestors made a very significant transition to an upright posture, with bipedal, on two feet, locomotion, and a revised role for the front limbs. In the study of evolutionary development, there are certain physical features, best thought of as partial adaptations, which appear to be relevant for speech. They are streamlined versions of features found in other primates. By themselves, such features would not necessarily lead to speech production, but they are good clues that a creature possessing such features probably has the capacity for speech. Instead of looking at types of sounds as the source of human speech, we can look at the types of physical features humans possess which may have been able to support speech production. We can start with the observation that at some early stage, our ancestors made a very significant transition to an upright posture. Some effects of this type of change can be seen in physical differences between the skull of a gorilla and that of Neanderthal man. The reconstructed vocal tract of a Neanderthal suggests that some consonant like sound distinctions would have been possible. In the study of evolutionary development, there are certain physical features, best thought of as partial adaptations, which appear to be relevant for speech. They are streamlined versions of features found in other primates. By themselves, such features would not necessarily lead to speech production, but they are good clues that a creature possessing such features probably has the capacity for speech. Teeth, lips, mouth, larynx and pharynx. Human teeth are upright, not slanting outwards like those of apes, and they are eerily even in height. Such characteristics are not very useful for ripping or tearing food and seem better adapted for grinding and chewing. They are also very helpful in making sounds such as F or V. Human lips have much more intricate muscle interlacing than is found in other primates and their resulting flexibility certainly helps in making sounds like P or B. The human mouth is relatively small compared to other primates. The human larynx or voice box differs significantly in position from the larynx of other primates such as monkeys. Physical Adaptation Theory Source With the change in physical feature, Adaptations become necessary, water animal became land animal, four-footed animal becomes two-footed. First things happens mutationally, further thing happens naturally. The related changes in evolution become adaptations. Example, change in vocal tracts of early human, man of old stone age, Neanderthal man. The skull change in gorilla and the Neanderthal man from the earlier animal. The functional change of the legs as hands. All these changes were at least as early as 60,000 years ago. Physical Adaptation Theory Source With the change in physical feature, adaptations become necessary. Water animal became land animal, four-footed animal becomes two-footed. First things happens mutationally, further thing happens naturally. The related changes in evolution become adaptations. Example, change in vocal tracts of early human, man of old stone age, Neanderthal man. The skull change in gorilla and the Neanderthal man from the earlier animal. The functional change of the legs as hands. All these changes were at least as early as 60,000 years ago. The earliest fossil evidence of language, spoken, is available from 35,000 years ago. But in evolution some partial adaptations appears relevant for speech. These adaptations get streamlined in course of time of development. 
Some of them lead to speech production. Roll of tooth, lips, mouth larynx and pharynx in sound production. All these are called functional adaptation. Physical adaptations. Now that we know the general idea of the theory of the evolution of humans, let us discuss some of the physical prerequisites for language in humans. Descent of the larynx. Most languages are spoken in their most basic form and thus humans require the ability to pronounce consonants and vowels. This ability is only found in humans and not in other primates such as chimpanzees, evident in the role of descended larynx in humans. However, it is important to note that other non-primate animals have a descended larynx as well, but are unable to use language like humans. The Human Descended Larynx from William T. Fitch's speech on the evolution of language, 2005, the larynx, also known as the voice box for humans, can engage into the nasal cavity of animals, allowing the ease of breathing while swallowing simultaneously. The larynx in humans is lower than that of other primates, allowing more space for the, the tongue to move during speech production. The descended tongue root, i.e. the back of the tongue, allows additional degree of freedom for vocal tract acrobatics during speech. Production. This mobility of the tongue allows it to produce highly coordinated motions, and therefore giving humans the ability to produce consonants and vowels. The difference in anatomy of other primates' vocal tracts from humans thus prevent them from speaking well, even with speech training. The comparative method on descent of the larynx. A descended larynx was believed to be uniquely human until recently. However, it has been shown that animals generally lower their larynx during vocalization, for example dog barking, when vocalizing, i.e. producing sounds. Lowering of the larynx during vocalization may hence, be an analogous tray, i.e. trays that are similar in function, but from a different evolutionary source. Additionally, several species of animals have similarly been observed to possess descended larynx. Examples include koalas, deers and even lions. Since the common mammalian ancestor of these species do not have a descended larynx, this convergence indicates that selective evolution may have taken place. From this discovery, Fitch, 2000, proposed that the motivation for the descent of the larynx was not only caused by the need for speech in humans, since this descended larynx in animals did not cause them to speak. Unlike the descended larynx in humans, the evolution of the vocal tract thus requires consideration of other factors like selective evolution. Both homology, i.e. similar function, but different evolutionary source, and analogy traits must then be analyzed for a comprehensive understanding of humans' capacity for speech. This comparative approach presented by Fitch, 2005 then suggests a probable hypothesis that the tray of a lowered larynx may have already been present even before the, the humans and chimpanzees species split from a possible common ancestor. Further research was then done on nervous and muscular control to explore other prerequisites for language to account for the reason behind this occurrence. Specific movements of mouth and teeth are crucial to the production of consonants and vowels. Thus, Researchers hypothesis that there could be a particular gene in humans that control this fine motor skill, leading to the significance of the research on the FOXP2 gene. For nervous and muscular control FOXP2. Another physical prerequisite for language in human beings is the presence of the FOXP2 gene. In general, FOXP2 in humans is a gene which codes for oral motor control and speech production in humans. Speech production in human beings require fine nervous control. One of the most evident aspects is that enhanced motor control over vocal articulators like the tongue, lips, jaw, etc., is needed for speech production. For example, the movements of the tongue has to be synchronized with the lips and vibrations of the larynx, voice box, when we speak, Lieberman and McCarthy, 2007. It is important to note that the above discussion on FOXP2 applies to the human variety of the gene. However, since this blog focuses on the features and origins of human language, we will not discuss how this gene codes for other functions in vertebrates other than humans.
More information on the differing function of the FOXP2 gene in animals can be found in this this hyperlink. To conclude this section, both the descent of the larynx and the presence of FOXP2 in humans are crucial for speech production and thus are also important in the physical development of humans to produce language. However, in terms of processing and understanding language, we need to also look at the cognitive prerequisites. Applied Linguistics Group is for helping students of BS English. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups. Dr. Khalid Malik has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Saul from UMP. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and presently admitted to a postdoctoral study project in a Canadian university. Find Applied Linguistics Group by reaching at youtube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani or copying or downloading a QR code to join.